We're going to see FaZe and G2 duking it out. Two teams in the top 10 ESL World Rankings, keeping FaZe out of the top five. But let's find out if they can go ahead and pick up the 2-0 today. It would be up against Astralis, a rematch, getting to see those guys duke it out. G2 have to pull out their finger if they want to take us to three. Well, off we go then. It will be the second map, potentially the last. They pick a phase clan here, and they'll start on the T side, sending five players over towards A, three of them in the palace. You'd imagine a smoke down towards CT spawn, maybe one for connector as well. This one's for steps. Miko will be deploying that. So one for jungle, one for steps. Flash over, three out towards the palace position, and try and get a kill in CT spawn, but no one there. They're focusing towards jungle. So these okay. nades for the retake could be fantastic. You can use that basically anywhere that those Ts could be residing. But their problem is they've given up CT spawn completely. They're giving this to phase. They're allowing to take this real estate. This is a very peculiar mini-map right now. Look at the stack. Or well, the flash Moloch could be an It's going to be a battle. Here we go. A skirmish in CT spawn. They scarper five of them. And Brokey's not interested. He tries to back out. And with the frag from Olof, they can reposition. They know where everyone's coming from. Olof's trying to turn tail. He does get away at 16 HP. Nexus got the kit. Keep that in mind. Time's ticking. First on the bomb. He's very low. Cold Zera needs to knock him off it. Nexus still defusing. And he gets knocked off. It's all on to Amanek. He's fluffed now, and they're just going to spray him in relentless bullets. Cold Zera has saved FaZe Clan from a perfect defuse on G2. It was looking so good. The retake was just designed beautifully here. You're seeing them just swarm the bombs to their form. Look at it being defused right now. It's up one less than a second there, and Cold Zera saves the day. That's unreal how close it was. G2 had done so well. The smoke on the bomb, the defuse kit there as well. They avoid the flashbang and CT spawn, but it's not enough. 1-0 over FaZe. You know what's wild is they will have no idea how close yeah. that round was. They would have absolutely Phase no damage, idea. Yeah, yeah they, they sitting there thinking everything was cool. Oh, yeah, great work. But G2 are going to have a bit of confidence. They were so close to stealing that one away. The force fight coming on through right now. And it's a bit of an A stack going on here. Four very close towards A ramp and the palace position. If they come through connector... G2 can sweep forward, and that's going to take away territory from that of FaZe Clan, and it could get real weird in transition here. FaZe haven't had the cleanest rounds against Pistols today. They have a couple of Galils, the AK-47 for Cold Zero after getting four frags in the previous rounds, and they are just dissecting the map, getting a bit of intel here. And most teams do stack towards B. Great Grenade Connector. Actually takes Rain to half health here. He has got control of connector though, and we'll see oh. a bit of a ramp push here from G2. Yeah, this is the counter strating the tendencies. This is what I'm talking about here. As soon as that connector smoke went up, they started pushing. And they're finding absolutely nobody home. The only potential is Coldzera, and they're clearly ready for it. They're throwing smokes at him. They know what's coming, and Jax has found the first. Olaf in the site, he can't really work out where all the resistance is supposed to be. But the reality is, there's still four CTs ready and waiting on A, and look at the stack. It's working wonders. Nice yeah. handling by Olof. Yeah, it looks like it's not going to be enough time, though. 35 seconds, overwhelmed. They had no idea. And that's a very clean round for G2. FaZe, once again, dropping to the pistols. Only finding one single frag there. The A stack is everything. And the push towards A as well, you said. Olof might have no idea where they were. Assuming they'd be on towards the site, but they were so deep behind enemy lines. FaZe, give the round up. Yeah, well, it, it, I'm pretty sure it was the phase game. Uh, look, I, I'm not 100%. But remember that phase game on Mirage where they were doing their default, they were antique on mid, the flash came over from the CTs who only had USPs and it was more than enough. That run right there, I remember we had uh, the, the post-game interview. Oh, I'm seeing AFK Brokey at spawn. Never mind, he's back. Okay. I was a little bit worried there. He wasn't moving for a second. And they lost a round like that. And Yanko said it, you know, they we just weren't, weren't tidy enough. Well, this situation, they were doing everything by the book, everything as they should. G2 just had a fantastic idea of how to counter it right there. And that's a, a quick way to chuck around on the board. But FaZe, they can easily win one back. The throws of the Force by Wars that we see going down now, it feels like the first five or six rounds of every single game. Well, FaZe are experts at this. This is uh, this is their bread and butter. Well, it's Cold Zero down to 15 points of health, but he has managed to stay alive and bait out a lot of utility towards B. In terms of grenades, they've got one smoke, couple of flashes here, and G2 pushing towards the A ramp once again. Same maneuver. Same result, no T's there. They can't be certain the palace is the same scenario, but B split will be coming up shortly. Appropriately, primarily from short. Makes a good utility to slow him down, and he does win his first duel, Amanek. Wasn't checked by Olof, and so the frags. Oh, neat and tidy from Nexa. He's got three in the round, just using that Galil. Almost looks like an AK in his hands there. 
Well, not really much done for FaZe there at all. Managed to get a single kill, but that was about it. FaZe will be down to the eco here after winning the pistol. We'll see them in a 2-1. Surely going to be three. G2 certainly need these early rounds here. Not their map pick, not their best, but a uh, bit of experience with the Nexa and Hunter edition. Used to be specialists on this map back in the crazy days. Hey, Green, what's going on? This is a tech? Yeah, it looks like Yanko's had enough. He's out. Oh, okay. Well, I guess that speaks wonders to the losing to the force buy. So it didn't take a lot yeah, for Yanko seen enough to get after on that one. Going, Well, let's get on out of here. I believe this would have been the last series that we had go on down here. The, the stat lines, Nico definitely leading the way over there on Dust2 and Kenny having uh, some resistance with the tail end. He had that lovely double AWP kill uh, towards the tail end of map number one, but it shouldn't be too long before we get this one back underway here. Looks like we're back underway right here. So will be the eco, should be G2 kind of winning the initial battle for economic supremacy. And even Amanek keeping hold of that Mag-10 wants to go ahead and get all that extra cash. It's gonna be really fantastic to run around with that. Getting that extra cash into his bank balance before the weapon rounds commence. For now, Hunter's taken up a lot of space in middle, and now Amanek really wants to go aggressive. Oh, oh my lord. I wonder if we'll see the double orbs come out again towards the B side. Probably. Uh, when they need them, though. I think when they start losing a few rounds and they need to adjust things, that's when they'll, they'll bring it out. But for now, Amanek will have a load of money. The MAC-10, as Alex said, can farm a ton of cash here. A couple of kills will be worth $1,200 if you can find them. Kenny S, rifle towards middle. He knows there's a huge advantage, there's Glocks, no armor against him. First kill for Hunter. And they keep coming. It will be eventually found, but it's only the one for FaZe Clan. Cold Zera falls finally, and it's three to one. FaZe will be whipping out the rifles now. We do see an AWP bought out for, oh, who is that going to? Brokey, Olaf dropping that one, he'll have the rifle in return. So a ton of money now for G2. What a turnaround. Losing the pistol three in a row. This is about the best start you could ask for on the TT side. You've managed to get yourself to make A47s. A load of money in reserve. You can start taking some risks here. If they want to get aggressive, this would be a great time to do so. And we don't have the double off for now. Amanek will be happy to stay on the MAC-10, it seems. Oh, great shot, Brokey. He shuts down Kenny S in an AWP versus AWP battle to start off the fifth round. That's gonna be a big one for FaZe. So if you're Amanek right now, going to get that AWP could be great, considering he's got the MAC-10 right now. So he'd have to go back towards the window though. And he's currently the B anchor, just trying to get some control here. Coldzera spots a smoke. He's gonna see whether he can do anything with it. No one pushing up. He could actually help himself towards the B side of this juncture. So we do see Amanek peeling off. He'll go get that AWP, I'd imagine. They love this double CT push ramp. But this time there will be more resistance than they previously encountered. Spots him and executes one. Hunter survives just by the skin of his teeth. He's down to 19. He'll get away for now. But the bomb and the players are going to an open B site. They're going wild. Straight in. Olaf checking everything. There's nobody home and the bomb can be planted just like that. Well, there's that AWP. Presumably collected Probably safe, stage. yeah. Should be a save call now. There's no point going for this one here, just considering we're so early on within the piece. Now, uh, SEO, he remembers this game very well as well. We'll take a trip down memory lane here. So last time, we've talked about it a lot, these two teams went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It was quite the affair. We had overtimes galore. But in the first half on the T side, Rain was having a lot of woes. He was getting picked off consistently. He actually ended up, uh, I think it was 3 for 15. Wow. in terms of opening jewels. So three for 15 in terms of opening jewel. Uh, uh, he's normally towards a ramp as well, right? So Yeah, he was getting uh, picked off a lot. And look, here's the entry fragger. So you expect that, but that meant that he was having no success or that G2 were doing a very good job of dealing with the way that he liked to approach certain areas for picks. Now, keeping that in mind here, he's already sitting at zero and four. We're only five rounds into the game. So he's lucky Brokey in the last round bailed him out got them the opening onto Kenny S right there, but that's something we'll keep track of because if they've really figured out how to negate Rain, a player who all the pros out there say is such a good teammate, someone essential to have in a squad, then G2 are onto something. Well, let's see what they can do with it. Three, two, one round separates them so far. It's gonna be the double orb setup. As expected, Amanek taking that over towards B. They still got decent money going forward as well after saving a few weapons in the previous round, a couple of AK-47s to note. Rain looking for his first kill. This time position in middle, flat default. Just going to be waiting for any 
CT aggression, which G2 are certainly famed for, especially likes of Hunter, likes to push in towards B every now and then. Once Samanek feels like he has full control, but for now they have both orbs in towards the B bomb side. So Kenny will be focusing towards short slash connector. No one else to back him up though. Seen this position from Rain before in Chad's demonstration. No flashbang this time. He had Nico in support as well. Connector is now under the phase flag. And a great nade. I don't Huge know where that came nade. from, but Nico and Rain have both lost half of their health before they even commit to this site. And Jax has always got a friend. He's got Nexa right behind him, and it's going to be a successful trade. Numbers favor phase, though, and what a there shot. Is. There's Reigns first. First kill, and it's a hell of a shot to boot. We are going to have four players surviving for phase. And like we mentioned, both of the orbs over towards the B bomb site. So they have to save here. It's a bit yeah. of a strange setup, isn't it? And you can't run that setup again, presumably. Look at the, the cash over there for G2 right now. There should be enough for them to, to warrant another buy, but those orcs were completely stagnant. They couldn't do anything. They weren't involved in the round. They had zero impact. The only thing that they knew was that Biaps was clear. That's all they knew. Biaps is clear, and with that information, it wasn't enough. I, I'm really... I, I think the setup has merit if you can push Amanek up into a forward position like this, because Kenny with the AWP can take lots of different fights, either aggressive catwalk, dropping back to the bomb site. There's a lot of versatility to that. And the biggest threat on the B bomb site is the theory of the unknown, the, the set pieces coming on through and overwhelming you. So Amanek is taking that away. But it, it's a high-risk maneuver. It's a very high-risk maneuver to be having two AWPs on the same bomb site right there. So if we see it again and it works, look, good stuff. Uh, we've seen a few teams run that, to be honest with you. Like, I guess it kind of makes sense when they do come towards B, you've got two turrets ready to go, and if Kenny has to peel away, Amex is happy to hold the bomb site by itself. But, yeah, it certainly doesn't work out when they walk into the A site like that. So money, as you mentioned, still pretty good for G2, considering they build up such a bankroll with those three victories, including a second round force buy. Smokes in towards A, a faster approaching. See all five for phase, getting ready and waiting, trying to shut down these two orbs, I would say. And we'll see the sniper towards B, Hunter, trying to push them back at the apartments, but Olaf Meister comes out on top. Very nice smokes, but Jackson play around the one underneath. He's thrown it out to extinguish the molly. Caught now by Nico, 3v3. He does catch a bullet. He's down to 23, Good and he nade. could get naded here. Looks perfect, but it's a bit over the top. Doesn't drop in. So double orbs in the retake here. Bear that in mind. They're not the ones finding the picks at all. And if the bomb goes down, they're in a lot of trouble. Thankfully, they don't have a smoke. So getting that bomb down is going to be one tall order. Brokey coming in from the palace position. He looks towards jungle bravely. Scopes up. He has to take that risk. And he's looking towards that position. We have got Nexa there, but he's tucked in a jungle. No smoke for Connect. So they need to plan vulnerable to CT, but really, they've got the potential for a boost. You can see that the bomb's on cold. So with 50 seconds left, oh, the barrel. they've seen Ooh. the barrel. That's a lot of information. Little just showing the tips, all Kenny needs. 40 seconds. This standoff is insane. Look at that. Nexa doesn't have to move a muscle. Nico has managed to maneuver this far, but still they know that there's orps in play. They know that the short line will be held and they don't have any nades to stop it. Tagged by Kenny. And now here comes the frags. Does catch Nexa after all that waiting. Huge plan. Oh. And now they know exactly How? what these orbs are. This is going to be difficult. They've got to use kits, but need an early kill. If the grenade lands perfectly towards the window, could be on the summit. But Nico, oh, he's owned up. He's absolutely smashed it here. Kenny S will go down. Amanek to save the AWP. If he can. If he can. Good call. Nico's got him, I think. And indeed he does. That's both orbs removed. What a beautiful shot as well. Does he recover the sniper? Ooh. Doesn't go for it. They've already got one. So, look, just there, the fact that they were able to stand completely still for that period of time is insane. Agreed. It was. I thought the fr the server had frozen for a Nico second there. Nico knew he was here the entire time. He just was so sitting, aware waiting, of it. patient. But G2, ants in the pants, I guess. I guess so. They, I feel like the catalyst there was the shot from Kenny S. The fact he connected one as well. Everyone's going to maneuver there. He spotted the barrel towards the palace. He's seen one jump over as well. He's hit one of those shots. Of course, they're going to move and try and back him up based on that information to deny the plan. But they didn't know that Nico had them all under lock and key there. Now, we've got another stat coming in from SEO here, and it is to do with the man Kenny S, who has purchased on into this round. A huge factor last time for G2 in the overtime affair was Kenny going 11 for 1 in openings.
So uh, we want to keep an eye on him, see if he can perform to that level, and on Rain, if he can lift his form from last time round. And I've just thought about it. The only way Nico got into that position was because he was boosted by Cold. Amanek was holding from short. Next is going to operate under the assumption that if Amanek's not called anything, shot at there's anything, there's there. no one there. Yeah. Unless he, he was playing 4D chess and expected a boost from Sandwich. Man, great play from FaZe. It gets them the frag eventually, gets them the round eventually. And it is their map pick. T side have an advantage and still a buy from G2. Strong buy as well. Double ops again. This time he's found the opening frag. Amanek looks set for another here. He's glass cannon though. Bear that in mind. A few AK bullets could take him down. Nexa trying to find the AK-47. Might not want to pick it up considering the noise it will make. Rain takes a nade. That's down towards the connector again. Brokey's going to go for this. He'll jump up. He'll peek in a second. There's the shot. The exchange blows, but nothing lands. But it's all about baiting it next to him. Beautiful job. Cold Zero doesn't even anticipate it. Oh, the flash. Look at Nico full blind. He's got a spare AK now. Bomb delivered. Round one. Nexus just holding the map bay. And the flashes oh, keep coming. This time, himself. a team flash. Brokey. He has hit some incredible clutches over the course of his time on Road to Rio, but he's been dealt a pretty dud hand here. One versus four. Yeah, the money's not horrible for FaZe here, but Brokey, if he could get a couple of kills, that would have been great. Getting into that round was almost impossible. You can see how difficult that choke point is to deal with when the CTs are set up and ready for it. And right now, we're going to be tied up at four to four. So this continues to be a close matchup. Not quite sure how we're going to see either side start to stretch their legs here because it will be another buy coming forward from FaZe Clan. They just put three rounds of their own on the board here. Their loss bonus has now gone down to that of, well, it was 1,400. It will now be 1,900 in the next. You can see they've got a full buy, everything that they need. So these two teams are locking horns right now. This is going to be a bit of a slog fest here. Trading blows. Here we go towards B then, all five players. Amanek to be tested once again, but they're much further ahead this time. Nico so blind, so damaged, but in he goes. He has got the advantage here. The first call will be his. It's closed, but Nexa, he'll find two. The MP9 doing a lot of damage here, but there is the equalizing trade. Three versus three, no smoke down towards the kitchen, but I'm sure they're going to change that up very shortly indeed. The incendiary down towards the bomb site. Just to let... Delaying that plan if possible, and this is the big shot now. Brokey hits this. They really are onto something, but Hunter, fantastic work with the AK. Oh, man, Hunter. Peeking into that orb takes guts. Called on short. Olaf could flank into Kenny here. He's being covered by Jax for now. He can't move. He, he's locked, he's, especially as that smoke fades now. He has to wait for Cold Zero to try and get one in the back here if possible. They can't check Olo's position. <laughs> this is going to be quite the play. He's going all the way around. Two backs are going to be turned. Kenny thought about it for a second. Cold hearing the scope has thought better of it. Hunter's trying to clear. Oh, it all comes down to the timing here. Yeah. yeah. So one smoke. It's enough. And their two backs are turned. Cold can get both of them, but just as he arrives, oh. he loses his teammate. Great spray. One more to find. It's Hunter on short. And he could find the shot, he finds the fight, but it's Kunta. He wins two crucial duels throughout that round. One onto Brokey and one to secure the fifth for G2. Oh, just needed an extra couple of seconds ever called Zero. If he gets those two kills, the round is probably theirs, but it's disaster. He gets the two, but loses down the one versus one, and money has been broken here. Next up, two big kills in the MP9. His teammate went down, that was Amanek with the orb. The B rush was fully committed to. And this is the moment. Two kills found, but as you can see, Jax just about gets the smoke and the kill. So the kill through the smoke, I should say, as Hunter closes things out. So five to four, Eco for FaZe, Glocks, and with $2,400 coming in next round, they do have a pretty decent buy. Brokey only on two kills, Rain only on one frag. We were just talking about him a little bit earlier, still sitting at zero and four in terms of the opening jewels, but this is playing a lot slower uh, than the earlier signs. When we made it to overtime, when these guys met a month ago, the game got a lot pacier. I think we started to see more of their regular style of play coming on out, a few more risks taken as well once we get into the throes of overtime. Uh, look, this should be a G2 round. We won't try and pull the wool over your eyes right now. This is going to take an absolute <laughs> mammoth effort from Nico on that deagle for them to even be considered in this round. They do like to slow it down in these sort of scenarios, just bait out those grenades. Towards top and middle they are right now, hoping CTs might get aggressive and find these four glocks but here comes the the push towards middle first kill for kenny 
I'd have to say should be no problem, but somehow doesn't connect with anyone. Most importantly, though, Nico catching that need. So their only hope on the Deagle and still has found them the opening. They're going to try and get this block train overwhelmed, but already Nico's lost his Deagle. They've lost their uh, key integral component to success and should just be a matter of time now. Olaf's still alive, cold, looking a little AFK. And yeah, looks good. Rain's done well to find another before going down. Managed to recover the AK. If I'm G2 now, I'm expecting FaZe to go back to the regular default. <gasps> oh, okay, they took the AWP away. That's a positive one right there. Yeah, if he gets the AWP, though, we're cooking. Nexo does deal with it, and now, well, this one's all over. Nexo dealing with that, recovers the AWP. Four kills from him needed that, considering they managed to find three. Yeah, so, look, I, I think that if FaZe go back to their regular game plan, which is more mid-heavy, we'll see the smoke on towards Catwalk, window smokes, we'll see that kind of play coming out with more harassment towards Connector. If G2 are ready for it and they make the adjustment, that's where we could be in real problems here. That means that G2 are one step ahead of FaZe Clan at that point, and that's where the game can really get away from them here. It's not necessarily Kenny doing the heavy lifting this time around. It is that a Nexa with 16 kills to his name. There isn't really anybody close on the other side of things. Nico with seven, Cold Zero with eight. Rain and Brokey have kept pretty quiet within these early stages. And what have they got coming up next here? We do have a FaZe Clan by the Orpah Brokey's out. Haven't really seen too much from him. Same story for here Rain. Here comes. And, uh, Yes, indeed. The smoke's down towards middle. Seeing if there's any CT aggression, it certainly is. Hunter looking to send it here. As the flashbang's delivered, we can see that deeper smoke and incendiary there to hold them off, and it's certainly working. Whatever phase had in mind has been shut down. It's under full CT remit. Middle will be shut down for business as Olaf Meister looks for an opening towards B. A flash and go would be perfect. Look at this. Look at the minimap. Yeah. And there's the flashes. In they go. And they look for Amanek. He's done well to be completely hidden. And now he can strike. The back was turned of Cold Zera. He's done well to buy time. And if that shot had hit, Kenny would have contributed greatly to stopping that bomb from going down. Now what, his options what, what? Uh, Why would you waste the smoke like he that? He smoked in them off. The kitchen. Nice deep smoke. They'll have to go out the window. <laughs> Fortunately, Hunter has already managed to do just that. Yeah, I think he thought he might get a one way from that or something. But ultimately, he's denied access now towards the kitchen. It will be Hunter. Taking the first bullet, Olaf Meister takes him after planting that bomb. Nexa, we have a chance now with the M4A4. Encroaches towards the bomb site here, but Nico surely has his number being spotted. And now the C teams will have a very oh, difficult okay. task. But there's a team kill. Almost yeah. a double. Nearly got them both. Nico did the work for him. Now taking a jewel he didn't need to. There isn't much time. It should still be a phase round, but they take two more on the way out. And we'll save up Kenny's AWP. FaZe taking it on B. That Kenny was so... It was, it, it, I, I kind of understand what he was thinking, but... Oh, that's a quick way to uh, lock out one of the choke yeah. points of access back <laughs> into the like bombs, he, that, isn't it? The thing is, though, you like, looked at the Molotov, Can considered it for a second, and then it's like, yeah, just right. screw it, just yeah. throw it down there. Like, if you'd have thrown it super deep and then used the, the kind of... the suggestion that it would be blocked off, maybe there's something there, but he just took away his own vision, and then his teammates had to go through window. But to keep with the theme here of uh, reflecting on what happened last time to what ha is happening this time, G2 have already got more CT rounds than they did last time. It was 11-4 uh, to the T-sides on both halves. There's no way that you would expect that to happen again. So that that's pretty standard that we've bucked that trend. It's just how many CT-sided rounds can they get now? So nine would be good. Nine is nine's a good level. Ten is, is starting to get pretty good. Uh, unfortunately for them, their backs are a little bit against the wall here. If FaZe can replicate Oh, even some of the success they had last time around, there's no way that their CT side gets blown out of the water in the same regard. There's no way they lose an 11-4 CT half. It, it doesn't seem possible. And then you will cut the edit there when we make it. <laughs> That's cut. good. I, I, yeah. As long as I, you know, they, I can hear my voice some more, everything's fine. Yeah, exactly. That's what it's all about, right? I've been working on your birthday gift. It's just like a pair of headphones with your voice just talking you to sleep. That's beautiful. Everything's going to be fine, Chad. Everything's going to be fine. Sweet dreams. The only person you trust. That's how it works, and look, I do trust these SMGs. Ooh, okay. Reigns actually dealt with the Palace push in a very quick matter of seconds. I feel like Hunter is actually saying yeah. today here, what's he up to? Brokey, he's sending here. The MP7 could be good for another. Nico gets tagged in the process, but it is going to be a three versus two. I don't think that bomb goes down. He's going to swing. He should do. Amanek will have a chance to deny this, and there it is. Another scrappy round against the pistols here. FaZe Clan not checking their corners, and the four it. defuses coming through here. 
And Olof he goes down. Nice and shot. It's Facelander just uh, getting the first two kills, not checking their corners. Yeah, I think that G2, they take quite a lot of risks on their CT sides, right? And this is another one. But they use the weapons that were available perfectly. If you want to close down distance, Palace is a great position to do that, and then close towards the A ramp. Even though Rain was able to mop this up, it was already enough chaos caused, right? You've said, oh, well, Nex is here. This guy's here. Oh, there's the two A defenders. Okay, let's go. Hunter's probably towards mid. And at that point, the round got away from them. They've now had their money knocked back down to a position where they have to take a timeout and talk this one through. Whereas FaZe, when it's against the gun rounds, when they have the set plan, when they understand that the weapons are equal on the board, they'll slow it right down, they'll play the percentages, they'll take their time, and they'll convert. But here in this situation, they may have just let the half get away from them. G2 could now mount at least eight. How, are the, how do these rounds, from like a kind of a, 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 a mechanical standpoint, get away from you? As, as when you've got the, the better weapon, you've got the armor. Well, it's because you have to think about all the information in their head, all the information that's being pumped into their head, right? Ranger's got two kills in Palace. Well, instantaneously, you should never assume, but instantaneously, Jax is one of those names, so he's normally an A, a gap, defender. Right? Well, you think to yourself, okay, two guys have just pushed Palace, we've taken them both out, let's now push A, because right. there should be less resistance today. You're not expecting anything more than that, right? And unfortunately, Hunter was up close and personal, and that kill right there on the A ramp was the undoing, I think. That one, if, if Hunter didn't get that kill, yeah. that round would have been a lot closer than what it was. This is, it's just all the tendencies, all those little bits and pieces in the back of the mind. And it really does accumulate into some crazy Counter-Strike. It continues here as Jax could get overwhelmed. He's already been chipped down to 46. If he jiggles into Nico, he will fall. Just pistols and again, a threat. Yeah, Kenny with absolutely. one. Absolutely. With this bomb going down, they've got no armor, but they have got the man advantage. Good grenade. We'll take Olaf Meister down. Probably thrown from next step back to the four. And three now, but another shot from Nico. His second of the round connects cleanly with the head of the Hunter there. And the next been spotted. Cold. He did take his time to line up the shot, but the retake, it's working out wonders. Just with the orps as well. Bomb being defused by Kenny. Nico can't contest it, but he can try and take one away. And oh, great Damn. shot. I don't know if they're going to be able to recover that secondary orp. And he wants to try oh. and take another valiant attempt. One orp taken away. Three kills for Nico, pretty good, but at this stage, the game might not have a huge knockout effect. Only a couple more rounds to go. Round 14 coming up, three headshots, so enable them to get the bomb down. And this uh, third shot as well, quite special to remove that double orbit. As you mentioned, the money pretty good on the CT side. And that's going to be the eight for G2, looking good. To take us to a third, which will be Nuke. All powerful Brokey. And it's a full buy here for FaZe, and no... Hunter aggression leads to kick things off in round 14. Yeah, they can just feign that mid control now that they've been able to get away with it once successfully. Yeah, it's the same smoke top or middle. Kenny's got this. Oh! He doesn't know where he's getting shot from, I don't think. The elevated angle into his toes. He's lucky to be alive, working now with just four points of health. Anything short of a smoke grenade impact will now take down Kenny S. I love how active G2 are on their CT sides. Look at this. They've lost mid, so they're pushing a ramp. They want to know what they're dealing with. And Brokey, unfortunately, looks away at the wrong moment. This could be catastrophic right now for yeah. FaZe. And he's going to be assuming that the no... Oh, he does his due diligence and clears the corner. But pulling the pin, Hunter, they travel in pairs. Oh, it's looking so good for Hunter. Really carrying the team wow. on the safe side of the map. And there's another ding towards Nico as well. Three on three, but next up, he's got a guaranteed frag here. That's going to be advantage G2 once again, looking for their ninth round. Need to get across. 30 seconds. Cold surely wants to get out of this apartment's position. If he really wants to defend that bomb from there, he's going to have a lot of issues. Great molly. This Ooh. is good stuff. Oh, he's going to hold it. How much health does he have? 20 as he exits the flames. He's got another Molotov on the CT side as well. Flashbang will catch Cold. He'll have to turn around. And they know exactly where he is. He has no chance of winning this now. Oh, great okay. shot towards Kenny. If he gets another one tap, could be onto something. Flashbang will come out. He knows he's a challenge. Can't even go for it now. Oh. He can defuse the bomb. He can't do anything. I mean, there will be enough time. He'll be able to shoot, but he has to hope Nexus doesn't hit his shots. Avoids the flash, but Amonex holding it. And yeah, that's nine. G2 will take it. Great shot from Cold and a rather sticky situation. He managed to get himself some. His face is pick. And their T-side has been met by some fantastic resistance. Yeah, they can't really handle this A-Ram push. Hunter just absolutely schools them each time. M484 here 
He said he would be using it and uh, manages to get two and a half kills in towards the round. Great shot from Caldera towards Kenny. He's having a bit of a, a rough time today, but still. 9-5 is looking incredibly good here for G2. And we've got an all for Nico, and he makes it work. Kenny S goes down and finishes half with six to eight. Spectacular shot. He wasn't even boosted. Did it the hard mode. I think Brokey's head has been spotted, and ooh, Hunter. It looked good to me. Probably good oh, to him. Ow. And blocked by his teammate, Ow. Nade won't fly. Second will. I was 9-6 on Dust2 in the first half there. We're on track for another 9-6 here. Dominic loves these pushes. Yeah, often overlooked. Oh, he's going through. Nice idea. Had to take a risk. And he's the only player in towards B. You'd say this one's done. It's round 15. Five versus three. No real damage inflicted. Oh. Oh. Exit removed. That's going to be it. Looks set for a 9-6. Olaf's going to be pushing perfectly into Hunter. Jumping out the window, though, and met by Olaf all the same. Looking set for the six. Just Jax. He's coming in from A. He, they know he's the A player. And with five players still standing for FaZe Clan, they That's can start their celebrations. Broken. They'll start their team talk. We're going into the defense, boys. Nine and six on the half. We're off into the defense. In the blue corner, it's FaZe. And in the T corner, it's G2. B-Stream update for you. Godsent did manage to... Uh, actually, no, wait. Looks like North beat Godsent. I was f f given false information. North are actually up in that series. Um, and it looks like Godsent are about to close out on the second of that. So, going to a third. Back over to our main stream. And it looks like we've just about got in time for the action. We absolutely have. Here we go, then. It will be G2 on their T side. Phase with... A lot of Kevlar, all of might with a smoke and diffuse kit. Three towards A. Make it four with the player in a CT spawn as well. And it's going to be the A spread coming forward next. So they're whipping things out. That's called zero removed. But Brokey looks incredibly strong there. The USP manages to get three okay, beautiful Brokey. headshots. He's got a fourth available. Apparently not. But that should be the round. Three on one. Hunter. Nice shot. That's on the window. And now he's in the two versus one. Well, this pistol round is a great demonstration of what the players in the server are capable of. Just crosshairs on heads, as the pistol round can and should be. Oh, spots rain. Will, if he gets this kill cleanly, he could have a chance, and he has. Shuts down Nico, and he's gotten away. Bomb on his back. Rain's getting a bit nervous now. Hunter just needs oh. the wall. Oh. God, it was close. It ends with rain, and it ends with a seventh on the board for FaZe Clan. But Brokey, he did all of the hard work for his squad here. Let's see that third shot. Takes the, the first two. And this is a third. Just a narrow angle onto Amine. Just quickly. Well, before we get stuck into round two here, on map number one between North and Godsend on that B stream that's going on down, North won map number one, 16 to eight on Dust two over Godsend. With and Jumpy. Jumpy had 17 frags. He was the third highest fragger on his team. He's back. He was the third high, fourth highest fragger in the whole server. Wow. Sign Jumpy. Yeah, he's... Uh, get him in. He's sending it. This is the eco for the likes of Hunter and Co on G2. Not to be confused with Nico's USP and armor which is what you are currently observing coming into the second round. He's been doing this awfully uh, more often. I've seen some very, very good players getting away with this one. And uh, last time I think I watched him do it, he pulled out a 3K with his Glock. So watch out. Into with his B. What? His Glock. Looking to deny the plan here. Cold zero off most to make a light work of the G2 roster here. Just Hunter remaining as usual. We'll see him come in with the Tech 9. Just a matter of time. Close one tied up. Nice <laughs> shot. The one tap towards Olof. Oh dear. Why is everyone just so nutty, man? You can get another one here. Yes. Oh my god. God damn. They're feeding him. Okay, finally, <laughs> Hunter is put to bed, but yeah, he, he complained and he complained very, very loudly. That's three from Olaf. You can see the clean kills from him. This is where you'd expect the MP9 to really be in a different weight class to those Glocks. And let's see these two shots Hunter managed to pull out. Now, we haven't said his name an awful lot, and it's surprising, is Nexa, who has 24 kills to his name already, right? And look, that is a massive haul. We were singing Nico's praises in the first half right there of Dust2 when he was doing a similar thing. So Nexa is uh, definitely doing a lot of damage right here for G2 Esports. On the T side, though, it's going to be a lot more difficult for him to get involved. Yeah, this is the pick of phase. It's a CT-sided map and a flashbang from Nico trying to open things up here. We'll see if this is going to be where the orb can start to show us what it's made of as well. Broker brings it out early. Olof Meister still with the MP9. No grenades really available now. Just two slugs, a couple of flashes. They have got some kits. And this is going to be my G2 will show us their AK-47 for the first time. Hunts up. 
Known to be boosted up in that window, just watches the get a peek. Could get his first kill. Up middle. Window smoked enables him to cross safely. There's no contest from connector. The flash is there to ensure it as well, but Molov, he's always playing short, this time with an MP9. It's gonna be that close duel. Hoping Jax is looking towards the bench position. <gasps> but Coldzera's caught out. There's two there. Knife out for Jax, but it doesn't matter. He doesn't even catch him. It's double kill straight into B. The flash, it fades. Brokey will catch Kenny as his vision's restored, but he loses oh. his life. Amanek hunts him down. Looks great for G2. Yeah. yeah. Gonna have to save these weapons, but it looks at things. Rain won't oh. even get the choice. Hunter is looking deadly out there. Just Nika remaining now. The money is terrible for FaZe after giving those two kills to the Tech 9. It's gonna come back and haunt them. Bomb going down now. And round down. That movement from Brokey, he hit the top of the doorway as he's trying to jump back away. Maybe, maybe, if he didn't fluff that, he could have gotten back around the corner there. But either way, those two opening kills on Catwalk, as soon as Olaf doesn't trade one for one in that scenario, the round is basically all over. You can see how quickly they're able to cascade on towards that B bomb site. And that's going to be Nico going down to Hunter there, who, oh, 18 kills to his name, is out fragging him on this specific map here. 15 for Nico on the other side of things. And unfortunately for FaZe Clan, this is going to have to be the save. This is going to have to be conceding 11. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that jump yeah. cost him his life. Probably around the corner by the time Amanex mantled. Mm. Good the little point. details, Very only the little point. details, it's but something. we never know what would have happened after he got around that corner. Brokey's been known to hit a couple of wild op shots in recent times. They chose him to invest. Yeah, big risk. It's just Rain who's kept it a little bit more modest, but he has still got the CZ and Helmet combo. Couple of smokes here, and we'll see if this is where FaZe can steal a round away. They'll have three sets of Kevlar. It would be an absolutely mammoth That's round. Hard. If they can find him, they've actually found a gap here, Chad, by the looks of things. Rain, he's towards the end of Palace, but Amanek watching it like a hawk will drop off and potentially give him access towards T-Spawn. So they can stack at least two players B now. They have all the... Oh, he got the dink from there? Yep. Hit that. With a CZ, hits the dink into Amanek. Wow, very thorough. If you were called Zera, you would have slight hidey hole, but... He's not playing there for this round. And oh my God, Nico, he just walked straight through the smoke and he gets away. Took time to steady his aim, wasn't gonna miss that one. Wanted to make absolute certainty that he could convert. Brokey's gonna get a little hot now. Yeah, not looking great here for FaZe, but Cold Zero pulls another one back. The grenade's looking pretty decent to do damage towards Nico. So it is a four versus three. Advantage for FaZe, but Rain, Nico, they'll be low. Hearing those rotating players, Brokey will find the AK-47. He'll start calling the heading towards A, and that's where Nico can try and find another kill here. We know he's good with that Deagle, and there's oh. the first. Can't get a second. AK-47, two versus two, and Hunter surely has done enough here, but he oh. hasn't accounted for the CZ, and Rain with 22 points of health. He will find him there. Another scrappy round right down to the wire, and it will be FaZe winning with just the CZs and Desert Eagles. If Rain didn't retreat after that exchange with Amanek, he wouldn't have even existed to save the day there. Precisely. Yeah. His restraint at the start of that round translates to a round in the last 10 seconds. That's magnificent from the Norwegian. And the FaZe boys have done it with a risky force by. They would have been a, like, correct me if I'm wrong here, Chad. That would have really screwed them up if they forced yeah. and lost at this stage in the game. They would have had to have taken an eco in the next. They would have been looking at least 12 rounds on the board for G2. Ooh. They're potentially poised to take the 13th. But oh, Nico, he is uh, looking lightning hot here this evening. He is 12 and one in openings over both maps. He's 48 for 32 at this point over both maps. So this is gonna continue to tally on up as the rest of the evening uh, goes forward. But right here, right now, FaZe Clan, they have to steady. If they lose this one, they'll be back in that cycle with the question yeah. mark, do we force again? They need to convert right here. This is a huge round here. And it's gonna be G2 with a Tech 9 and Amanek, a Galil for Kenny. Three AK-47s otherwise, and pretty much full array of utility. So we'll see if they can pull this one off. A huge round for both teams. Remember, FaZe, already a map under their belt, looking to pick up Mirage, their map pick, but it couldn't be closer right now, as you would expect. We played Dust and Mirage in the previous matchup. Both of those maps went to overtime. I'm expecting that here in the second. Only one spot available and two teams battling for it. The grand finals of the road to Rio for the European region will be Astralis and the winner of this series. FaZe already have the one map advantage. They picked it up over on Dust2. That was G2's map pick, now Brokey. 
Brokey. Staring over towards the action, in fact. There's a lot of it, and they aren't expecting Cold. He's trying to get around the corner. He will get hunted down. We've got a 4v4. Certainly do. Olaf Meister just to the far, so gets a dink towards Kenny, but it's still not going to be enough here. Oh, wow. That's a great kill. Could be on wow. for a second as well. Four versus two. Amanek and Nexa. AK-47 and the Tech-9, but the first will be found by the pistol. Want to go down here. This is looking pretty good. We are going to see a decoy and an HG available. Next up, providing covering fire from the Via Palmer's position. Okay, so FaZe are going to really have to calculate this retake. Next up, could get caught by Rain. But he's checking. And he's, oh, he's hit a very clean shot. He's looking good for Nico as well. Next up, he doesn't want to quit. Brokey's already retreating. And G2 have really con continued to confuse things. Ooh. Now with the AWP... What, 1,400 lost yeah. bonus? Yep. What? So it's a double eco or force. I feel they have to buy. The, the thing is, with the AWP still in play, I feel like buying is the only option. Otherwise, it, it feels like a waste of the save. It feels like, well, you may as well had a crack at the 2v1 Brokey because he will now have to hold on to it for potentially two rounds in a row. That's going to be no easy feat. Even with these two kills, Moloff, it wasn't enough. Four versus two. And G2 Shine, especially Nexa, he's had a great showing here on Mirage. His 27th kill found here towards Short. Brokey does save the AWP, and we'll see what kind of investment they want to make. They don't go all in. Cold Zera and Rain will significantly invest, but... Uh, <laughs> they kept enough for the bus ticket, Henry, so yeah. they can get home. That's about it. <laughs> That's uh, a good point, but uh, they can certainly make this round work. The AWP will be there. And you go towards middle. Look at that first one dig, and that was a chance, but a very difficult shot. Yeah, not going to hit this time, but gosh, challenging middle when you've got Nico and Cold Zera's Deagle to wait on the other side. It's certainly no easy feat. Kevlar Vest as well. Keeps them safe. But Hunter rocking a Mac 10 can exploit all of those unarmored heads. No helmets for majority. Rain, he could catch him here. He's ready for it. Oh, spots him as well. Amanek's got the rifle, though, and he will take the first. Yeah, it doesn't look good now. Brokey won't be able to have massive impact once the bomb gets planted. Needs to try and deny that fact. Cold Zero towards CPL. Kenny S just outside. Jumps up. Looking to get towards window, which he will. Cold will hear that, though. Okay, he's checking it, but a great shot. Something. Certainly not much. Nico hanging around in that palace position. He's been there since the very start of them taking that A site. So you're not really going to send Brokey anywhere near it. But what's Nico? Can, what's the best case for him? Uh, saving the AK-47. Waiting for them to exit. Leave the bomb site. Take one of them down, potentially Olaf Mice can grab the gun. That's about as good as it can go. Let's see what can actually be done. First kill will be going in favor of Nexa. And uh, I think that's probably all she wrote. Brokey to save the AK with the AWP. That's called Zera finding the, the rifle. Puts us at 12. Likely 13 here, Alex, because... Uh G2, well, they've been known for some good pace changes. They've been uh, known to punish a lot better than what FaZe have been doing, right? The, the changes in pace of which they've gone for, reflecting back on Dust2, they were always making those right calls hard onto the B-bomb site, take it away from them. When we saw FaZe go for rounds like that, they would end up getting multi-fragged, and they would end up getting taken out of the equation. Now, I think G2 were probably on track for one of those with an Amanek Mac 10 in play here. Normally indicative of something a little bit faster when there's no... Ut oh, the utility comes in. Okay. Yeah. He well tricked me there. They, they still should be able to approach in the same sort of manner here. They know there's an all being saved the AK, but the money in terms of loss bonus is only at the second stage, $1,900. So take an educated guess. Oh. They won't have much. That confirms it. Hunter finds Nico at the top of middle. We only have the Desert Eagle. So that's a five on four. Execution towards A looking very likely. Four smokes deployed. Molotov's going in as well. Flashes to follow up. Will this be the heavy commitment here as they drop all their Molotovs? It's looking great here for G2. I don't see a world where they give this one up. The USP will be removed by Nexa. Looking to get that plant down. As soon as they do, it's going to be saving weapons once again, I would say. Please. That dribbly smoke they threw out, like an underhand from Nexa on Palace, really, really screwed the pooch for Olaf. He couldn't contribute at all. Dropping down was a difficulty. And then Amanek collecting an extra 600 bucks and quite the upgrade. A Mac 10 for an AWP. Can't believe his luck, especially with 7K in the bank. That is a banging good deal. And at round 23, it's time for FaZe to really dust themselves off, check themselves, because Nuke is on the horizon here. It really is. FaZe clan on their pick really needs to pull their socks up. 
as we see three rounds in a row for G2 on the T side of Mirage. All about for Brokey once again. Had to invest in it. The M4s will be joining him. They have got a real difficult task ahead of them. No oh, kids. Like this, though. No incendiaries, but a three man push towards middle, focusing towards that unpass. And we'll see all off my step battling towards top of middle. As Brokey opened things up, though, he finds Hunter towards the transition. And they're going to commit to A. Just going to send him. See what's available. Oh. He was looking in the right place. Spots one of the four remaining. But he wants to challenge Ramp. He's just calling the bluff of Amanek, and it works out. Brokey, he's taking risks, and it pays off again. Two more into the site now. Amanek. If they can get this bomb down, but the casualties keep coming. Nico's caught Kenny. And Amanek continuing to twist the knife. He will not quit. The spray is ridiculous. He spots one. His teammates will tell him, surely. He spots... He didn't. He didn't see him. Olof Meister was there on his peripheral vision, but Olof Meister will be able to collect all the same. Still plenty of cash for G2, but a must-win round there for Fades. It was broken to open things up. The thing is, they get these opening kills, but the round still comes very close to being given up there. Two players survive. Money still won't be great. They've got one AK-47. The old four broke as well. It's FaZe after winning the previous round, calling the timeout here, knowing they're on the back foot once again. Rain will have to go for the MP7. I'm not sure what the play will be. Will we see more aggression, perhaps? Yeah, I think when they looked assertive right there, they were actually taking the fight to G2 as opposing sitting back waiting for them to dictate in which range the game was going to go. They were able to find those openings, right? Hunter wasn't ready for Brokey. He even grabbed another one because they thought, oh, they must be doing a mid push right there. But for G2 in this game, their T side, I didn't think they'd be able to post a similar type of resistance as what we saw first time around. I thought, that, I actually think that G2 on Mirage look pretty average in most of their outings here. But against FaZe, they seem to have the answers. They seem to be looking like they want to take us to the third of Nuke. Yes, indeed. And it's all decided here, to be honest with you. FaZe, in terms of their loss posts going forward, they're going to have $1,900. They lose this round. They're fully invested due to losing so many players in the previous round. It could be all said and done. And G2 are looking very healthy here. Five AK-47s. And Brokey, this time positioned towards B. He's looking towards the apartments. First kill for Kenny S. Doesn't even need the AWP. Gets that rifle working out. Certainly not for Brokey. That could be the round already. Yeah, certainly looks that way. Uncharacteristic miss. All off with it all to do. They're spread out all over the site already. They don't have to rush this plant. They'll clear the close corners. And now already the hunt is on. Look at Kenny. He's so pushed up. Oh, spots the foot of Nico and tries to draw him into his arena and still hits the shot. Kenny looking sharp for his 11th frag. Yeah, very good stuff here. That's an important kill as well. Nico, one other rifle going forward, had the M4A4 available to him. MP9 for Rain, but uh, all off my step. Looking away for a second. Does it just in time. MP9 will yield a kill here. And it's 600 dollars to be fair, but Hunter, oh, well, he'll shut everything down. 14 to 10. And like I mentioned, money is absolutely bugged here for FaZe. It's going to be $1,900 per player. And they've got one timeout remaining, I believe, but uh, might not be much else to talk about. Ooh, oh, great second shot onto Rain. Knew the frag had gone down earlier in that mid position. Yeah, so FaZe are actually going to be playing for overtime here. It's the best bet they've got. They'll have to swallow their pride and accept the 15th. Won't be well with welcoming arms. There will still be an attempted resistance, but two Desert Eagles, $1,400 is all FaZe have presented into this one. Yeah, <clears throat> almost no chance now, especially after those first two kills. It's going to be Jax finding both the Desert Eagles there. Hunter collects the USP of Rain. And that's a five on two, a very quick round here. This phase will have their last two remaining players over towards the B side. That's going to be 15th round found for G2. Map points and their opponent's pick here. Nuke pretty much locked in because the story doesn't get much better for phase. They get $2,400 next. And that's going to be enough for a buy, but uh, compromises across the board. Yeah, I think if we just take a look here between Nexa and Hunter, that's 29 on Nexa and 24 for Hunter at this point. These two boys have put in an absolute haul here this evening on Mirage. They really want to get to that grand final versus Stralis that will be going down tomorrow. The winner of this will proceed through the lower bracket final. Meet Stralis who are waiting with a one map advantage. And we'll be kicking that one off at uh, 8 p.m. tomorrow night, I believe, as long as the CIS final, which is Wind Strike taking on Spirit, doesn't uh, run over. Those CIS games tend to be anything but slow. Yeah, they're very, very quick pace. And I, I, I do like it. There's very individual stuff. When we uh, did the Spirit game, we were talking about their, their strategies on Mirage, how they like to limp out individually to create uh, gaps across the map and see if they can isolate any heads-up jewels. But right here, I think this will be uh, 
The, well, this is not the last round. The next round will be the last round, but I think that will be the last round. I think that it'll be done and dusted. I don't really see much fight left in Oof. phase on this one. They don't have enough utility. They don't get the uh, AWP out unless Rain wants to drop that one across, but that means he'll have nothing on the board. So it is very likely we're going to nuke right now. I just don't see that that normal phase fight here. G2 are looking too good. Yeah, this is uh, some great synergy, some perfect shots being delivered as well. And Hunter, he's not taking any prisoners today, making sure he mobs up every last player. No saves available, and FaZe could be their final round here, Mirage. They limp in with just one defuse gear, bare bones utility, no AWP, and aggression towards middle. But if I'm honest with you, this is a, a pretty telegraph call. The nade going up as well. We'll see rain challenge. Jax potentially going down. Looks a little bit overwhelmed, and there it is. First kill. Perfection. Opening move from FaZe Clan, knocking on the third map's door. G2 are the ones that need to walk through it. Hold. Has found a safe haven in dark. Uh, no, he's stuck and he's so slow. He's just down to 15. He will eventually be met by Kenny's bullet and G2 are into the site and they're already finding the frags. Brokey trying to save them, but Kenny's had a mad one. Three on that default box. Pressure from Nexa as well. All on to all off. That, that angle, God, it's high. Just a headshot. Nexa will collect.